Up next, it drives, it floats, it swims. It's the world's first amphibious electric tricycle. Now, most of us already know that the Philippines is made up of 7,107 fantastic islands. But what is not so fantastic is, last time I checked, there are not 7,107 bridges out there. This creates a problem. Well, meet the solution. It's the H2O Salamander, the world's first electric amphibious trike. And the best part of it all, it's 100% Filipino engineered and designed. So, okay, my first drive of the Salamander, we're on the road right now, land portion. Acceleration so far is very, um, well, it's not very quick. It, it feels a little heavy, I guess, for the motor, but keep in mind that this is a prototype and their motor should almost double in power. I think they're looking for a five kilowatt motor uh, instead of a three kilowatt motor for the production version. But this is actually, I guess, enough for barangays and, and stuff like that. It's a bit slower than a tricycle, but it feels good. On public roads, yes, it's not exactly very fast. I'm doing 41 kilometers an hour, 42. It's sort of toggling between that. It feels quite slow and I'm alone in the car. So definitely you'd want that five kilowatt motor because it would give you that extra boost. I mean, you're not looking for top speed as much as you're looking for just sort of acceleration off the line. It's about as fast as a golf cart, maybe even a bit faster actually. I'll have to be 100% honest though, it is, it's a little hard to drive, meaning the steering is particularly heavy. <laughs> Even in a straight line, I'm kind of fighting with it. If you're used to a motorcycle or a tricycle, this is taking quite a lot of force, but it does give you some kind of feeling of stability. There's the brake there. I have this sensation that I'm gonna tip over but I'm assured that I won't, even at top speed of this thing. So, but it can't, you can't sort of cheat that feeling because it's heavy. I know I haven't got wheels on this side, so, or that side, it's only a single wheel. The operations are quite simple. It's uh, very traditional with a motorcycle. You've got your accelerator, which is on the hand grip that you just sort of pull down just like a motorcycle. Uh, the brake though is a foot brake like a car, which is right here in the center. Uh, steering wheel is handlebar type, very heavy. <laughs> Can't stress that enough. It's not really a motorcycle, it's not a car. It is really developed and engineered as a bespoke vehicle. So even the gearbox, well, this one doesn't have a gearbox because it's electric, but they have the combustion engine version that uses a proprietary gearbox because it doesn't sort of have the same running gear as a motorcycle. You've got two wheels at the back and that has one sort of powered axle. So you've got the electric motor on the axle powering the rear wheels and that's how it gets the power to the ground. But it's completely 100% engineered exclusively for this. I like this thing. This is kind of cool. This is, this is something I'd like to have in my garage for those days when you get flooded out. Oh, this is going to be a lot of fun to take around. Woohoo! Now, I'd like to say this is my first on-water review, but it's not. <laughs> We did this with the yacht the other day, but anyway, this one I'm actually really driving. It's noisy. You got to expect that. Small price to pay, really, when you think about it. I'd even say, I'd go as far as saying that this feels more at home in water than it does on land, and that's saying a lot. I'll just cut the throttle there for a little while so that you could sort of hear what I'm saying because 
it's there's so much to be said about this thing. I mean, the fact that it's so good on the water um, makes it such a special vehicle. I guess that comes from the boat building experience. These guys have over 15 years of experience building boats, and there's a multi compartment here and a double hull. So this thing is extremely buoyant. I mean, it's you really have no feeling that you're gonna tip over or anything like that. So I can do as much as I can and nothing's happening here. And that is really good. Now the interior of this thing is about as bland as, well, Simon Cowell's wardrobe. <laughs> There's not much in here. But what you do have is very functional. Got your lights, switch there, speed high, low, hazard lights in case of emergency, not when it rains and you got your wiper, low, high, and more importantly, your water and land function. Now, if you don't know how to use this, you shouldn't be driving either this or a vehicle because it's pretty self-explanatory. When you're on land, flick it over that way, water this way. This motorcycle-inspired steering wheel over here, well, that controls, of course, the direction you want to go, and it has a lock function over here. The lock function is important when you're on the water because of something very complicated underneath to do with the propeller. Now, it does have your very uh, standard life-saving devices here in the glove box. As you notice, you pull that out, you've got your ding-dongs, you got your sky flakes, and everyone's happy there. The other life-saving stuff is under your seat here. Right now, this is being used to house all of the batteries and stuff like that of the unit, but you do have in the production model, they plan to put the life-saving devices here, like your vests, and your ore as well will be stocked over here. Over at the back, you've got USB ports over there, and over here at the front as well, USB ports. This is also very important because these ports are powered by its own individual solar panel over there, which is completely independent from the machines and the electric motors that they use to power the vehicle, which makes it pretty innovative. Now, at the back here, there's nothing, just a couple of plug holes and drain holes in case you get a little water in. We haven't experienced much of that since we've been driving around the water, um, a little bit every now and again, but really, up here, it's bone dry. It's really, really well built. And that is it. That's about the extent of the interior of this salamander. So it steers just like a land vehicle. So it's very easy to operate. Point and suit machine, really. Just aim where you're going and steer as is. I don't seem to have any kind of speed here because the speed is land, land speed, it measures the wheel speed, should I say. So what I'm going to do right now, I know you shouldn't use your phone while you're driving, but we're out in open water and there's really nothing to hit out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up an app and I'm going to try and measure my GPS speed. And that's my GPS speed right now. We're doing about five kilometers an hour. Not so bad. Now, as a finished product, the Salamander does leave a little bit to be desired. I mean, it's got really heavy steering, woeful brakes, and it could use at least twice the power that it's got right now. But just remember, this here is a concept. And unlike other concepts that we've worked with in the past, this here was not developed by a multinational with deep pockets and an open checkbook, no. This here was put together by a bunch of Filipino engineers and designers who came together to solve a local and very real problem, which is that 26,000 barangays in the Philippines are flood prone. That doesn't even take into account the barangays are separated by a body of natural water. So you begin to understand just how important this vehicle is. And despite its shortcomings, the fundamentals are pretty spot on. This thing does drive very well on the road, but amazingly, it does even better out there in the open water. And that in itself is enough reason for these guys to push forward with this project. Sure, it could use a couple of cup holders in there, but with the right kind of funding, these guys could eventually develop a model that we could see every day on open roads. It should become something that Filipino barangays could use as a tool, not only for transportation, but for rescue. And for that alone, they've got our support.